Hi, my name is Karen Rademacher, and I'd like to demonstrate for you some tools and techniques for annotating your photos. You know, I either own or have access to hundreds of family photos, and I put off scanning them um, because I haven't been confident about how to best document or annotate the photos. I have the right equipment. I just wanted to, to document, document the information in each photo properly. What I'm using is EXEF tool, Graphical User Interface, and this is freeware. When you open the program, you see this uh, screen view with four areas that you can adjust to your liking. And this top area is a, a directory tree. And once you navigate to a folder that has photos, you see them listed in this file list. And then once you select a photo, um, a preview of the photo appears in this area. And all of the embedded information about this photo appears over here. When you scan a photo or take a picture, your device um, embeds right into the image file a lot of information um, about the image itself, the resolution, um, the size, and so forth. Um, so this software allows you to inspect every tag that's hidden in this photo. So this view here shows all of the information, and then you can look at the information in various subgroups. Um, this Maker button will show any proprietary tags um, that the device uses, and th this photo doesn't have any of those. Next is IPTC. This is a tagging standard that's used by photojournalists. XMP is a standard protocol uh, developed by Adobe. And then EXIF is a, a standard protocol used by most of the equipment manufacturers. Um, when you take a picture with your camera, um, my Canon camera embedded dozens and dozens of uh, variables or camera settings at the time I snapped the photo. Um, here's a photo that I scanned not too long ago of my great great uncles and um, what I'd like to show you is how to not only look at the tags for this photo but to edit them as well. And you can see that some of the, um, the tags are shaded green and that means I've selected them to appear in a custom workspace and I designed this workspace to show just what I want to know about this photo and to show some fields that I want to edit. So up at the top I see the file name and the equipment used, the date it was created, and the software that was used to create it. And this middle area is geotagging information and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. And then finally here are eight fields that I have carefully selected um, that I'm going to use to put in valuable ge genealogical information. And I've specifically selected these fields for their genealogy value and also for their compatibility with other software programs out there. Because once this information is embedded in this photo, I want to use it in other applications. So let me quickly show you how to, how to edit these fields. Simply put your cursor on the line that you're going to edit and hit enter. This first field, um, description or caption, um, is a conversational um, description of the photo. I'm not going to use full names. Um, this is the same type of description that I would write next to this photo if I was putting it into a photo album. So these are the Pearson Brothers, circa 1925, from left. Carl Oscar, Fritz, Ernest, and brother-in-law, Dave Peterson. Enter. Uh, the next field I've chosen is called Keywords, and here is where I do capture the full names of every person that I can positively identify in this photo. Um, if I'm working through a photo album, um, maybe Carl Oscar appears over and over again, and I don't want to type his name over and over again. So I, off to the side, have a notepad cheat sheet um, where I pre-typed all these long names, and now I simply copy, Control-C, 
and paste, control V, and uh, now I've got names appearing um, as keywords. You do have to put an asterisk in between the names um, to separate them as keywords. And then I didn't have an entry for David Peterson. I have uh, four location descriptors for this photo. The first is if I can identify a location by name, and in this case I can. It's Antelope Park. And then I can move through these fields simply by typing enter. I don't have to touch my mouse. So that means efficient data entry. I have a field called event. If this was a wedding or funeral, I would enter that here. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it blank. And then finally, there's a field called description writer where I enter my name as the person who documented this photo. That's useful for future users of this photo. When finished, um, click Save to change all those yellow areas white, meaning that they're now saved. Um, let me show you quickly how to geotag. This is a photo of my great-great-grandparents' homestead farm in Nebraska. And geotagging this photo is useful because this homestead no longer exists. All that's left is a barn out in a field. The house is gone, the outbuildings are gone, there's not even an address associated with this location anymore. So to be able to embed into this photo the specific location um, by means of a pin on a map is a really great thing. So to use geotagging in the software, you first have to enable it in your preferences window by clicking that box. And then you move to the Google Map tab and what you need to do is in this box um, direct the map to somewhere nearby. Uh, this homestead is near Weston, Nebraska. And um, I generally know where this is. A few miles south, a little ways west or east. And there it is. There's the barn in the middle of the field, all that's left. So I click the set button to drop a pin on that location and I can adjust it. And then I click on get locations to get the latitude longitude coordinates. And then I click down here geotag and uh, this file has now been geolocated. Um, so that's how you use the software. Um, I can very efficiently go into a folder, have a list of photographs, and just um, march through them one by one, geotagging if appropriate, um, entering um, these eight fields, and using my notepad to copy paste, and it's a very efficient workflow, and I can quickly document my photos. Now let me show you how this um, data plays well with other programs. Um, this is Windows Explorer and um, let me redo this here. Here's a standard view um, Windows Explorer and Windows communicates with some but not all of the tagging in a photo. It so happens that the caption that I wrote um, appears in this view as a title and the keywords that I enter appear as tags. So um, for that photo that I documented there are the keywords and there's the description that I just typed. And you can uh, rearrange this to your liking um, but that's a, a handy way uh, to see the caption side by side with the file name. What's more powerful, though, is to be able to search on both of these fields, and Windows can do that. If you uh, navigate to a folder full of photos, um, you can search by tag. You just um, adjust this search box here so it's plenty big enough. Click in it, tag, and here's all the photos, uh, or the, all the keywords that appear in the photos 
in the directory and all its subdirectories. So for example, here are all the pictures of my great-grandfather, Peter William Pearson, from no matter which subfolder they're in. And notice that I use a file naming convention where I put the year or the estimated year as the first part of the file name. And that way, when I sort by file name, they appear in chronological order. So there's um, all the photos of my great-grandfather, starting from uh, the first available photo until the last photo taken before his death. So that's pretty cool. Um, it gets even cooler. Uh, let's say that um, I know I've got a photo in here somewhere. I can't remember which folder. It's an Overland 6 automobile, and I know I wrote that caption. Just type Overland, and there's um, two photos. Um, one of them has Overland 6 in the file name, so I would expect that Windows could find that one. Um, but this other one, the Overland word appears only in that caption that I wrote, and Windows can find it. So that's nearly the holy grail for me to be able to search for a photo based on a word appearing in a caption. Let me quickly show you how um, these tags play well with other software products. Here's um, Adobe Elements, uh, not my favorite program by the way. Um, I would not recommend this program for viewing or editing uh, your tags, although it has that capability. If you go to the General um, tab and click on Metadata IPTC, click on those three dots, you get a dialog um, that does display um, those tags as I wrote them. But this is, in my opinion, a cumbersome way to edit your photos. I'm simply making the point that this information does transfer to any software that uses the standard photo tags. Here's though uh, my favorite application of this technology, and that's if you're bringing your photos into Google+. Plus. All of this information travels with it. So, for example, let me, oops, navigate back to my sample photos and bring in this photo here. Um, you will see, let me add it, skip sharing it for now. Uh, there's the caption that I wrote. So it appears in Google Plus without me retyping anything. And the geotagging follows it as well. Um, Google preserves all of your tagging, does not disrupt any of them. Uh, by the way, when you bring a photo into Facebook, Facebook erases all of the tags. So uh, hats off to Google Plus for <laughs> preserving my photo. When you download my photo, um, you will get all the tags that I put in. So that means uh, Google Plus is a great uh, platform for sharing photos that are tagged. If you'd like more information about what I've done, um, go to my website, road13.com, and click on Photo Annotations, and that will take you a page, to a page with links to the software and additional information. If you're computer savvy, you can reconstruct what I've done. If you don't want to take the time or you're not confident in your computer skills, you can download a PDF. Uh, the charge is $2 and I'll walk you step by step um, so that you can install the software and configure it exactly as I've done for annotating your photos. I hope you appreciate this. Let me know if you have questions.